It's the Daily Talk Show, episode 324. And we got the deep voiced man back in the building. Hello, everybody. Periscope. That, yeah, I was going to say, that's definitely not Mr. 97. That's Periscope Pete. Thanks for having me. Are you okay with that nickname, the Periscope Pete? Do we talk about it last time? We didn't, but I, I don't mind it. I think uh-huh. like I've referred to myself as the human Periscope, but mm-hmm. I kind of like that you took it another I level. I thought we took it off the website. No, <laughs> we, no, no. no, no. You, ch- you changed it up to Did I? Yeah, yeah. I'm that okay with really it. Doing. I like it. Mm. How are you, Pete? Excellent. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Mm. Third time, I think, and Josh mentioned that once you get on three times, you're mm. officially a friend of the show. Oh, yeah. this is perfect because we were actually trying to work this out. So it's Fat Fridays. Yeah. We're waiting for some food to be delivered. It says it's four minutes away. Don't so show I, Pete what it is. No, I won't we? show you what it is. So um, we were trying to work out which we want to we want to build we need a name for people who have come on to the show more than just a few times. So TJ now they push back on friend of the show cuz he's like you people who have been on less than 3 times are still friends of the show. Yeah. But then it's like the initiation once you get beyond the three. Not yeah. that it's like some, some huge filthy achievement. It's or like some sort of filthy sort of initiation. Where you <laughs> Is it separate to the cult that you've been yeah, creating? Yeah, definitely separate to the cult. Okay. We need a dis- distance from the cult. Mm. Uh, that's very special. Uh, so there was two names. Josh came up with one and I came up with oh, one. We won't okay. say which they are. Okay. okay. But it's... Uh, whose was whose. Whose mean? was whose because mm-hmm. th- there could be some biases. This is like the coffee test all over again. Yeah, <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah, we got you with that one. <laughs> so... Uh, the no two way. names were yeah you, you say, say yeah I'll again. say it Gronk Squad or, or who came up with that one or, or Team Gronk so which do you like more the Gronk <laughs> Squad or Team Gronk which becomes our believers essentially I think Gronk Squad Gronk Honestly, Squad yeah. hashtag okay. Gronk Squad okay I like it uh, Mr ninety seven what were you thinking Team Gronks oh, oh. okay so we got well see I said this is not helpful I said <laughs> hang, on, hang on hang on which one do you think who do you think came up with which I think. TJ came up with Gronk Squad and you came up with Team Gronk. Nah, yeah, interesting. You it again. Nah. again. <laughs> opposite way. <laughs> Jeez, we got him again. He's, he's failed a few tests. Yeah. You, were, you couldn't identify the long black from 7 mm. Eleven. Um, early, early days. So, yeah, I, I came up with Team Gronk and Joshy Boy came up with Gronk Squad. My pushback on Gronk Squad was that the term squad is trying to be cool. Mm. And it's it's been ruined by a whole bunch of kids at primary school. Bunch thinking, of squads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've just created their squad, mm. and so it's almost as shit as the dab. You okay. know, the dab. Is, he just did a dab. Can I we just turn that into a gif. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was not being serious when I was. I was mocking the dab. But the that's dab. what you could do. Double down on the mock. I reckon. <laughs> yeah. Call it a yeah. squad. I think that's it. Yeah, the dab's dead. At least Team Gronk could be. No, but could you imagine the squad and? Footage of all of us dabbing at the same time. That could <laughs> be actually. That's a good idea. Have you ever? There's one try hard amongst us. We don't I need to. Do can you? Can we see? Have, can, you try a, can you try? What you I, I can try. Yeah, can you, you might have to stand up to do it. He's going to flip us. What is? Do you guys know how to do this? I don't know how to do this. So this is a video. This is on. Go to our YouTube channel if you want to see. Have you ever done this? Peter, I have no idea. Can I just say, be careful of the PowerPoint behind? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So this is Periscope, Pete. Do you know how to do it? No. Give it a go. What do you think it is? Sort of like this. Oh yeah. Get some hips. Get some hips into it. Oh yeah. You're the backpack kid. You're the backpack kid. He he came up with it. Yeah. Great. You nailed it. Sure. You know why I think you actually nailed it? It's because if how tall you are. The backpack kid is like a, he's not, he wouldn't be as tall as you, but he has that sort of wire. Who is frame. the backpack kid? He's the kid that came up with it. He's with the kid what? that made the, the floss big. Okay. Oh, really? The backpack kid. You know, Mr. 97, he's, yeah, yeah. you you guys are so far removed from pop culture. No, we're just a couple, funny. we're just a squad trying to get, <laughs> trying to live it in this world. <laughs> Which is why I don't think we go with squad. This is, anyway, jury's out. We will work it out. Mm. We've had um, two, two, two verse two. So mm. far. So we'll, we'll find out. Whatever majority rules. I don't mind. I, I like the idea, though, that you, everyone's a friend. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then yep. you get that next level. Gronk squad. Just three. The Gronk mm. squad. Or so you're, Gronk. You're, you're embracing it. No, I'm just saying both. <laughs> well, Gronk. well, Pete's even <laughs> gotten into the um, uh, domain names. The other day we were going for a walk on a Wednesday. Yeah. And he sent me, what was it, wednesdaywalk.com, yeah. which I is available. Like oh. Oh, oh, this is perfect. Yeah, the, just the Uber in here. Eats, Thanks, Uber mate. Eats guys, oh my god, can we get a cameo? 
What is this? Mate, do you want to come on? Do, do, will you come nah. on camera and deliver? Nah, no, he's no, going to no. go. Okay. He's got to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's you. He Def- wants a good rating for his next Yeah, game, no, yeah. we get it. Five we get it. Five star. I don't um, think you give him five. Do you give him star ratings I, in Uber? I never give anyone star, stars. So what, what we have, I mentioned on the show, no, I mentioned on the show, I believe yesterday, we have chimichangas for all of us. Be- beef I have chimich- no idea what it is. Yeah, well, you heard you describe it. Mm. I still didn't understand what it was. Yeah, so it is a, uh, I believe it's a burrito. Okay. That's been deep fried. <laughs> <laughs> so real healthy, guys. Yeah, well, it's, it's Fat Fridays. It's Fat oh, no, Friday. No, you're right. You're right. Let's have when, a look. And when you think deep fried, you think it's going to come out like a battered salve or something. It smells like exactly so good. Thinking. Be careful with the lid. So it's designed, the way they do it is it's in like a, a one of those foil. Um, Trays, but then the the cardboard lid has a tendency to get a lot of the goodness stuck on top. Ah, so you ah, seal it off. Sticky lid. St- sticky, sticky lid. lid. The name of the episode. Lid. Maybe that's there the title go. of the the Gronk Squad. <laughs> the, <laughs> the sticky st- lid. The sticky lid club. Oh, that does smell amazing. Pete, what does oh. it smell like? What is this? It smells very deep fried. Have you got yours? Ninety seven. I mean, I'm a Mex- I'm a fan great. of Mexican. You are. I just I'm not sure about the deep frying on top. I'd never heard of a deep fried burrito before. There was one of my friends who knew about it. It's Josh. Yeah, it's Josh. <laughs> yeah I'm sure it would be. Something I'd do. And so, uh, do you cook Mexican at home? Not quite as much as Mister Ninety Seven by the sound of it. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> I like to keep it pretty simple. Yeah, meat, meat and veg. <laughs> Shit, I've just um, f- I totally forgot what we did. And what we tried and attempted to do on one of the episodes, <laughs> which was to call you, oh yeah, Far and out. connect you with who who we would have hoped you thought was your girlfriend. Can you tell us? Ab- can What's you tell us about what happened and what your e- uh, girlfriend emailed us about? Okay, yeah. So Chelsea, shout out. She sent you guys an email. I think mm-hmm. after you said, "Who is it that wouldn't?" call each other on the phone, yeah, I think. And you yeah, were sort yeah. of laughing with 97 about no one uses phones anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's his generation. I was really sort of encouraging him to get on to the yeah. blower. Get on the blower. Call. Have you heard, Pete, have you heard anyone call it a blower before? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely is it okay me. that I'm staying to eat my chimichanga? Go for it, Pete. Is it, we can talk. Would you, you've never asked for permission. So <laughs> wh- why ask now? <laughs> it's your show, bro. Mm, it's your good. show too. So just do what you want. You do, but yeah, yeah, so I was always encouraging, like, I've seen the younger generation just totally glued to their messenger. Like I've received from young people. Mm. That sounds weird. Young people. Um, Facebook, <laughs> young people. Facebook messages over like about work. I've yeah. hired them to be a part of it, mm. film shoots and they message me on Facebook. I'm yeah. like, bro, you're lucky I checked that. Yeah. Far out. Send so, me an email. Give me a call. So, yeah, so that's what, I, that's what you heard. Yeah. And then Chels. Chels sent me an email mm. confirming that – her and I have never spoken on the phone before. And you've been together <laughs> for what, two years? Three years. Three years. Yeah, three which, years. So uh, you live together? No, we no, don't. don't oh, you don't live together? No. Um, is this a over the internet relationship? Have you ever met? Mm. <laughs> yeah, to <laughs> me. Yeah, he's, being, he's being catfished. Um, <laughs> no, and so was there an actual discussion around uh, the potential that you might start using the phone? I tried calling you today. You didn't answer. Yeah, so I have... I have anxiety about phone calls. Okay. Is essentially what I boil it down to. In fact, it's almost, I think it's in our family. We have a joke about having to make phone calls is like one of the scariest, hardest things you could possibly do. And where does this come from? Like other than it being a family thing? I honestly have no up. idea. It's just like back from as young as I can remember where it's like, oh, you got to call the health insurance company and sort yeah. out, you know, it's like, oh my God, it's yeah. the scariest thing ever. And to the point where when I was working in corporates and startups and I was looking after clients and I have mm. to call them, I'd like get myself a meeting room, pace around for 20 minutes, yeah. build myself up to call this person and end up having a great conversation with them. Mm. Whatever it is, I don't know what it yeah. is. It just gives me this like huge anxiety. I feel like you're a guy that leans into it though. But that, in my mind, that wouldn't seem to bring the result of getting rid of that. But you lean into it, but it's always there. So yeah, it's, it it's go never away. gone. It's no. never gone for you. What about wow. Skype and Zoom? This Did is the weird thing is Zoom, mm. oh, like I'm all about it. I love it. The video conferencing, totally fine. Absolutely fine with that. It's something, I don't know what it is. It's something about yeah. having to do a, a phone call just completely freaks me out. A prank call gone wrong when you were young? <laughs> just okay. There so were tarnished. a few actually. I don't know if I've like suppressed that, but <laughs> yeah. we did used to do a little bit of prank calling. And really? I remember getting in trouble from one time we were calling our – I don't know, one of the girlfriends that we, or one of the girls that we all had a crush on in yeah. grade three or something. And we called her and her mum answered. Oh, uh, yeah. And I was like, you kids, stop calling this number. Yeah. And it was, I think maybe mm. it might stem from that. Well, I remember having call, when I got caller ID, I was just 
seeking the prank callers. I wanted them to come. I was just standing on, on. Yeah. And I remember I had uh, uh, my friend uh, Robert called mm. me, but he was calling me from Lachlan's phone number. Mm. So I said, uh, hello. And he's like, oh, hey, it's Rob. And then the conversation started. And he said, oh, what do you think of Lachlan? Oh, by the way, yeah, Lachlan's listening. Yeah, he was listening on the other thing. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I hung up and they called back. And my mum picked up and she said, if you want to be Josh's friend, be his friend. <laughs> Otherwise, stop calling. <laughs> Jeez. So Lynn's got my back. Um, my feedback to you just on that was yeah. one of my favourite things about the show is when you impersonate your mum. So <laughs> yeah. thank you for doing <laughs> yeah. that in the flesh. Live, I know. Is it, it's a yeah. unique experience. It it's great a great person. experience meeting a person. What I right. hadn't seen was the facial expression when he does it. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> made eye contact. And yeah, there's an intensity to it. YouTube.com ch- forward slash the daily talk show. Try the chimichanga. You're going to have to okay. use it. Yeah, it's just a thing. We actually, we genuinely yeah, need on it. Yeah, you can eat. I'll talk. So there's, so prank calls, it was a different era of the landline. Mr. 97, do you know what a landline is? Yeah, barely. Do you have a landline at your home? Nah. No, you don't. So you're a... F- Does anyone still? Uh, my mum and dad do. Yeah. Um, other than that, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> is it the same number as your household, like mm. your childhood phone number? No. Remember on the show I tried to call my childhood number? Disconnected. Oh, that's right. I'd that's love right. to get yeah. that back. You I'd get a landline. I'd bring cool. the landline back. I reckon there is something like hipster cool. Yeah. People listening to records, calling on landlines. Wouldn't that be great? I don't have a mobile. I just so have a landline. <laughs> it was Imagine hard. that. So when Mr. 97, there was a time when you couldn't tell who was calling. And this was a time when my mum and dad and our household received some late night calls and i remember i remember like hearing the the sound of the home phone ringing it rattles at you don't you reckon? late at night eerie yeah eerie as fuck someone's died call. like yeah. the amount of the amount of like deaths or whatever like oh. you'll hear the oh my goodness like i just remember like my mum yeah. like oh no i can't oh, believe yeah. that someone yeah. died just by that it's you like, know there's you okay? a place yeah. in the house where they mm. go to yeah anyway i remember my brother my eldest brother who's eight years older than me. So I don't know, I would have been a young kid, but he would have been a teenager. And there was some kids that called and impersonated the police and said that we've arrested uh, Anthony Jacket. So like eerie and scary, like kids can be fucking (laughs) assholes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that would scare the shit out of you. I think mum knew that he was fine. But back in the time when there was no, like my brother didn't have a 5210, which I had. Which was huge brick, the size of brick. Well, yeah. hand, what, yeah. the fifty-two ten was that prior to the thirty-two ten? Yeah, the thirty. Yeah, the thirty-two ten came after. I think. Yeah, which man. was the one with Snake too, wasn't it? Uh, fifty-two yeah, ten, one. thirty-two ten, thirty-three ten. Oh yeah. Um, thirty-three fifteen. Uh, yeah, it yeah. Got fancy. So, yeah, I had the um, flick down. I think it was the seventy seventy-two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so weird that they're all numbers. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the? What the fuck? <laughs> I, I got <laughs> a code. Weird, how weird is that? The Motorola Razor changed the game. That was I had a, oh, yeah. I had a pink uh, Motorola Razor. <laughs> Because well, it was just a like, bit of a flex, or not? Like it's just <laughs> no, weird it was a flex. peacock, bro. No, the reason flex. it was peacock, but the, flamingoing. The, but the reason I was doing it, I think, is because you could only similar to what happens now with the iPhones, where it's like I'm going to get this color because you can only get this in the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second, oh. the second um, uh, razor, which I think was actually thicker, which is sort of counterintuitive to where it's all sort of gone. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a strong. So it was a flex because you were like, I've got the second version. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a bit like that. But I did have a Siemens phone that was my first ever phone that had polyphonic ringtones. Oh, nice polyphonic ringtones. Yeah, did do you remember that? To, remember the ads and you used to have to like, call a number. Or I send edited. A text to a number? So I actually edited one of those videos where it was like, text you and your partner's name to the number on the screen and find out if you're compatible. God, like who all is- of this is going over Mister Ninety Seven's head. Yeah. No idea what's going on. Crazy, huh? I remember like um, parties, there was some home phones that got used to call those numbers in the back of newspapers or magazines, the naughty numbers. What about, so I saw it. It cost like five bucks a minute. So naughty expensive. numbers. Yeah. Naughty numbers. The, remember the sex lines? Is it still a thing? It's still a thing, dude. I'm sure it is. I yeah. haven't seen them, but it, people would use home phones at like parties. Yeah. And shit. It yeah. was like a real sting. What about, yeah. have you guys heard of swatting? No. So this oh, is, that's horrible. Tell me yeah, more. so this is a big this is a big thing in the US in the gaming community. I saw a video on it. I think um BuzzFeed have like a, a doco series on Netflix at the moment. Do you know what that's called, 97? But anyway, they it's delicious, um, by the way. Yeah, they're so good, aren't they? I'm enjoying it, yeah. It's not like deep fried like you'd think. No. It's soggy because they lightly put fried, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But they uh basically swatting, it's pretty horrendous. Uh if you're playing a game and you're really good. 
like say Counter Strike or something, someone will basically find your address and they say that there's been like a gunman in the the person's place, and so the SWAT teams come to this house no and someone's a, someone's actually been killed by like opening their door. What? And someone's like, it's ridiculous. What? So anyway, mm. because in the US- Kids are fucked. And yeah, the, that's brutal. And because police are like militari- militarized in the US, so they've got like crazy guns and stuff. Yeah, AK-47. Yeah, it's yeah. like full on shit, but what? it's a real problem where I think there's like, there was a thousand cases of SWATting in the US last mm. year. That's We've gone bizarre. pretty far off uh, the story of the Chelsea. it has gone a long way, yeah. Yeah. It's so great. that's why, that's, that's, why the, that's the thing. It. I mean, that's the, th- but that's the thing with phones. So like the, uh, I know like with Skype and stuff, you can't do like emergency stuff because they can't work out where you are. You can't use uh, 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 VoIP. So you're good with video call. You're video just not good good. with getting on, getting on the blower. Yeah. Something about it. And Interesting. So the, I think there was what about if What about if it's a phone call to Seth Godin? Well, like if he said, mate, Mr. Pete. Surely you, he's just on Skype or Zoom. Yeah, we have he's Zoom call. I've had Zoom no, calls. No, but if you had to call him, would this anxiety be there? <laughs> totally. Really? Yeah, probably what about, more so then. What about Josh? Calling me. Speaking, uh, to, me. speaking to Josh. Like wh- who is there Who that is there in your life that doesn't evoke any? What about mum? Probably mum and dad are the only two, I reckon. <clears throat> really? Like if my brother called me, I'd be like, that's weird. What maybe about some, if maybe call, someone's died? If I call... I mean, you just don't answer. I don't think you've answered. I don't. Call I don't yet. answer. Yeah. Have you ever answered one of my calls? I think once. Okay. When you said I'm five minutes away and I was there for fifteen minutes and then you called me <laughs> and you were like, I'm almost there. Uh, were you impressed that I said that we we're two minutes away before and we were exactly two it minutes? It was two minutes. Yeah. Um, I was happy with that. Okay, so you've never spoken to Chelsea on the phone. No. So there was a conversation we had. I think at the start where okay. I, I think I share with her the anxiety that I have behind phones, and she also spends most of her day at work on mm-hmm. the phone to people. So she was like, yeah, I don't really like phone calls either. Okay. So we just haven't had the need to speak on the phone. I, don't know, I know it sounds weird to other people, but yeah. to us it's like. Eh. And when we sort of, when we speak about it, you can sort of, you could look at the weirdness of it or yeah. the. I can see the weird. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so you see yeah. that for the majority out there. Yeah, I, I think like sales calls and shit, like I get heartbeat yeah. going and calling people. I remember calling girls, yeah. you know, so, <gasps> fucking. Mm. Called Amy first time. I remember that. Is yeah. like it felt like oh, a big deal. It? What what happened? I tried to tell her. So when we, I met her in Bali, and we ha- and I came back with his hat, and I kind of knew where the hat came from. But there was a chance that because Amy came where did and it stayed, come from? Amy, someone left in the room. So uh-huh. someone who was on the trip with us, mm-hmm. another um, girl that was in your room. No, it was a trucker cap. It was the ha- when Hamish and Andy did the uh, Hamish and Andy did the Thailand special. Oh yes, and so they they had all these hats. Anyway, the hat belonged to <laughs> sorry. Jesse, the hat belonged to Jesse Martin, who was over filming with Hamish and Andy. Uh-huh. But I was like, maybe this hat could be Amy's, which is a good <laughs> in to call her and say, hey, uh, the excuse to have call. You, have you? Uh, did you leave a hat? And it also has a bit of <laughs> like come through as well because it's like. I'm connected with entertainment. Like it's, it could be you, but it could be one of my friends. Either you or look, Hamish and Andy. So. Yeah, look, I never dropped the name. I will state that. I what never did you say to the hat? You would have described no, the I hat. Just, yeah, I described the hat. It's a green, green like has a, some tie symbols on it. it. But it was like notably, I didn't go with that angle mm-hmm. yeah. at all. And okay. so what did you, and so you call her? I called her and my heart was fucking beating because I loved yeah. it. And she said, Already. Um, <laughs> and she said, oh, no, that's not my hat. You're like, no, All right, we just bye. got into some chatting and, it, oh, that was so, fuck, that's bringing up some nice little warm yeah. memories yeah. inside. Keep what, do you, like, what do you talk about? Oh, we just talked. Like, this is the thing. We, what time of day was it? It was evening. I was living in Shepparton, so I was like. Lonely evening. I was lonely yeah. and I was away from family and I was coming down off that holiday where I met her and I was thinking about her every moment. How far off oh. from the the trip to the call about uh, the hat? Yeah, two, two, three days, okay. I reckon. Mm-hmm. So, so you've been pre- sitting with the hat there thinking, when am I yeah. going to call her? When am I going to call Well, her? this is my advice to Mr. 97. You've got to seize the moment. Mm. You've got to – there's some energy and sort of excitement around from the moment you meet somebody my biggest frustration to the moment you actually get together. Yeah. Is, it's, it, it actually contributes to – the reason why you could end up together or not end but up. But isn't together. there also the other side of the coin, not to say that we should use the game as our standard of, mm. but Neil Strauss oh. talks about negging. Yeah. And I would mean, a soft neg be? Yeah. Oh, you could, but I'm not here uh, to fucking play games. Amy's um, thoughts around me 
telling her what I wanted in terms of calling her, saying I want to see you. Mm-hmm. She loved that. Yeah. She was like, that was a big win for me because yeah. I didn't have to think about what you were thinking because think I that, told you her. That's amazing. Do you yeah. think people are diff- there's different types of people? Definitely, but I've tried all of the approaches and Amy's had similar mm-hmm. and she said she just really valued that. And so then it's like... Just clear communication. If you do what yeah. you want to do, which I did, and she was at that point of her life, that connected us. Yeah. That's why I'm saying like maybe it is a bit like do what you want, but it, whatever you do in that moment, there's some timing within that as well. Yeah. Yes. And so anyway, I um, called her and we spoke and we spoke for, a, I don't know. Who the that fuck is. Are you going to answer it? Don't answer no, it. No, number I don't know. I'm anxious. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Why use your phone on oh, because I, of the Uber Eats? Because of the Uber Eats okay. thing. Hmm. And so, yeah, we would speak for hours, and especially when we're doing long distance. Hours, really? We would speak at night most – like. When we started actually getting into a relationship, yeah. you know, f- official, we would talk uh, for so long, yeah. and it was every night, and it was lovely. But you, the long distance is obviously playing a role there. Or yeah, the longish distance. Yeah, yeah. And now, still, we talk on the phone heaps. Okay. Josh is on the phone to his to Bree heaps too. Yeah. Oh, just like, like if what we are you up to? Uh, if I we weren't, if we were owners questions. of this business, yeah, we'd be in trouble. Yeah. You know, that's like, why I was in trouble at all my other places. Yeah, because I would just, I'll call Bree, and uh, I'll say what. Um, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. And normally the answer is I'm working. What are you doing? Yeah, see, I can't get my head around that. Is yeah. why I would call Chelsea and say, what are you up to? She'd be like, working. Well, because I'm trying to work yeah. out. I'm like, oh, what, do you, what do you want to do? <laughs> what do you want to do for dinner? Yeah. And Brie will be like, oh, I'm thinking like something naughty. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Anyway, so Maybe that's it. been my experience with yeah. – I love it. I love that. I think – so in my defence, because yeah. I know it sounds weird. No, it's good. I like it. We – Especially early on, like we train at the same gym. So I knew basically every day I was going to run to Chelsea at mm-hmm. some point during the morning. Mm. So I didn't necessarily have that when am I going to speak to you next kind of thing. We also lived all of 300 metres away, I think, from each uh, other in okay, Richmond, great. Yeah. which was helpful. And yeah, I think, I think our version of that, like this is how I want to be communicated with, was me saying I have anxiety over phone calls mm. and her going, I speak to people most days, every day on the phone. So it doesn't interest me either. I'm like... Perfect. How quickly did no, you bring clear. that forward? Pretty early. <laughs> okay, so that's good. Yeah, pretty early on. Yeah. It's a good, like I think there's, it's not, it's definitely not negging. Yeah. But there's an element, like I think that I'd be like, oh, that's it. What, yeah. a, what a weird what a quirk. Dude. Yeah, yeah, what a strange, what a, what a strange guy. And I like this. I, I will mean, say, like yeah. full disclosure, there's been a few moments. I mean, it's been three years. There's been a yeah. few moments where I'm like, fuck, it would be easier if I just called it now. Yeah. But you don't want to break. But it's seal. almost at the point now where it's like, well, we've come this far. Mm. What, do, what do you think Seth Godin would say? Who, yeah, I mean, he's a friend of yours. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he would say, what's a phone call for? Yeah. And who's <laughs> a four? What's a four? Exactly. So who's a four? What's a four? It's for so a your voice, if, if you were calling to have a conversation about nothing, I'm, yeah. he'd be like, what's that for? Yeah, yeah, I get that. Whereas if it was like, you know, we have Surely to there's just some having sort of relationship bit. Like who's on the couch watching TV? Who's it for? What's it for? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But do, or do you honestly think he would – do you think he would – Do you reckon he's a real person? I, I don't want to – I'm not judging you at all because it's like it's your life. I've got my own. It's like it, – It's such a judgmental <laughs> thing to say. No, but it's I think I, I'm, I'm say- noting because I don't want to seem by me prying in this sort of opposite thinking is me – being mean to Pete and what his choices are. I respect that he feels anxiety. I like, but the thing is, so I, I think I'm on board with other things. For instance, the idea of getting uh, water from downstairs before to the cafe yeah. was a bit too much for me. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Mr. 97 did it. But I think like- We all have our own anxiety there are f- quirks. Like there are, honestly, I, I think there are a few things that bring up anxiety for me. Social yeah. anxiety. I'm quite good socially. But for whatever reason, phone calls is yeah. just one of those things. Mm. Toilet is one for a lot of people. Interesting. Going to the toilet in new places, yeah. n- not pulling at work. Oh, it's you more – Really? For me, it's yeah, more uh, – we've spoken about it before, but uh, if you're a, uh, a female and they haven't been to the men's toilets, they have – are they called troughs? What do we call them? I Urinal trough? Mm. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, see, this is a guy who doesn't use one. That's no, I, you, no, oh, I definitely really? – no, I use one. But if I really need to go, I just – the – the pressure in which I want to push, there's just a risk of splashback that I just don't want to yeah. have to deal with. This is a, um, a man who barely uh, progressed from nappies. <laughs> but do you, think, do you sort of understand what I mean? As a, as a tall dude, is there issues with urinals for you? Yeah, I'm sure there's something with the 
the height. The height. You're pissing, yeah. <laughs> pissing on a mat. You don't realise there's someone. Mine's yeah. going very much going downwards. Yeah. 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 Well, so that's actually works out quite well for you, I think. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I think the risk is that, um, you know, like when they have like plastic, you know, they've got like a, a mm. gel thing or whatever. What I'm not sure is where am I meant to aim? <laughs> mm. Do you know? Yeah, I know. I don't think about it. I just... I think I just go. Yeah. What do you think, TJ? There's a lot of thought in the toilet. Do stuff you aim Josh? at the ceramic <laughs> bit, like, mate? I do what's do best for the moment. Yeah. And that means you guys don't know. Well, we we need need there's what a bunch you? of different toilets. But TJ, you've had piss on your pants before at work, <laughs> so you're not like no, a great. Haven't. No, I haven't. Never. Never had it on work. If Those you're pissing green. on your pants, in, you, like, how the fuck am I pissing on my pants? There's I don't no know. There's no urinal how. here. There's a toilet. So it's pretty directional. There's no piss. I piss on my Do you want me to leave while you guys unpack this? No, no, no. no. <laughs> we don't need to unpack it anymore. No, it's just a, it's a big statement. No, it was big. No, it's I'm not big. saying you piss in your pants. You no. pissed on your pants. Hey, I'd rather piss in different. my pants than on my pants. <laughs> I don't know. But there's, anyway. other, there's also certain colours that's just like, if I wear certain colours, mm. I've got to be very, very, very pedantic. Mm. And it just happens, you just need one bad urinal yeah. For one little bit of spray back or whatever, yeah, for it to fuck you, and that's Pe- what happened with me. It happened once, and I'm like, "Well, what am I doing?" Pete, okay. so uh, with clients, coaching clients, <laughs> what, <laughs> what <laughs> would, it it is, no, but I think what's the? I mean, all, what we're talking about here is little things that we make really big, mm. and that not being a bad thing, it just being the thing. How? Do, what is the? What's the mechanism for moving forward through these things? And I'm not. So, I mean, we can we can do the call to your missus and have the first ever moment of you talking. That. You don't want to do that, and I don't want to press you into it. <laughs> what about me pissing in a answer. urinal on the show? <laughs> we do that. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> maybe we could. Maybe we could do both. What's your fear, TJ? What is? What are you? Um, I feel levels of all of these things mm. to some degree. I think about what other people think of me a lot, mm-hmm. but uh, but yeah. I. But I, I don't, I don't know how much it affects me. But I definitely feel. I think Josh like that cool thing, you know, like wanting to s- seem like you've come mm. across cool. I've worked a lot at that being something that I, you know, I, I, I don't want to care too much about what people think of me. But I mm. definitely care what people think of me. I, I think everybody does. Surely. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you think about, it, I've spoken about this with a few people before. But if, if fear is like an onion and every time you unpack a fear, there's another layer. Mm. I think the core of the onion for everybody is the fear is of what- Is a chimichanga. Is a chimichanga. <laughs> it's also the most amount of tears. I think it's the fear of what yeah. other people think of us. I think yeah, yeah. every almost so many things that we do out mm. of fear are based on mm. the perception of other people. Mm. What's like, your, when you come on a show like this, what do you reckon the guest fears would be? What do you reckon the most common? I think that's it. Is like, I don't want to come across as an idiot. I want people to think that I'm interesting. I want people to yeah. think that I'm funny. I want TJ and JJ to think, mm-hmm. you know, that- I'm worth having on again. There's all of those fears, I'm sure, go through every single person yeah. that comes on the show. And now everyone's thinking, can I become Team Gronk? Yeah. And <laughs> exactly. will I make it through to Team Gronk? Oh, we're back to Team Gronk now, <laughs> not the squad. Yeah, well, no, I, have to, I, have to, I have to cheerlead my side. I say we're back on you say team. cheerlead? Cheerlead. I, just, cheerlead. Sh- sh- I don't want to seem stupid. I think <laughs> doing something like this, the podcast, is like the antidote to Absolutely. <laughs> making yourself look silly, which means you're not worried about it. Looking silly, as totally. Much. I, I I think like I have my own podcast and mm. with with Jen Waldman and we've spoken about it before. But I think it's the sort of thing that even if no one was listening, mm. I would still a hundred percent do. And I yeah. think I actually think everybody should do it. Like it's a bit like blogging ten years ago. Is mm. there's value in writing down your thoughts in the same way? There's so much value in just talking about things out loud. Mm. So yeah, I, I totally agree. This blogging's good- blogging's changed a bit. I don't know if we spoke on air with Genevieve about that, but like. Uh, bloggers were th- like bloggers were a real thing. Yeah. You think about like uh, some of the people who I followed on Twitter, Darren Rouse, pro blogger. That's you know the was big that a thing, thing. Pro blogger, pro blogger. Wow. That was his whole thing, and still is his thing. What's the uh, what's your take on the blogging thing? You have a blog, you write on it. Yeah, do I you do. think that the um, all the social media stuff and podcasting has changed the landscape? I think a little bit. Mm-hmm. The thing that always makes me smile and laugh about blogging is so many people say they do it, but then you go on their blogs and it's like the last post was 2017. (laughs) I think the consistency of showing up every single week or every single day, if you're Seth Godin, is so rare. Mm. Like everyone's got one, but who's actually actively writing? Mm -hmm. So I actively write on a Sunday every week. Yeah. I've committed to that for the last almost two years. Mm. You and I were talking about, have we spoken about the uh, page, like uh, the writings and the, mor- the morning Oh, the morning pages. pages. This bloke gets out, just lays in bed. Do you do, you it, do in it in bed, bed. I've actually, I've changed since we talked about that. Really? 
So I used to roll over and grab my notebook and then just do it on my on my stomach mm. while I was still in bed. Maybe it was because it was summer now I get out of bed uh-huh. and there's a I just got a bedside table that I can stand at. Yeah. Because I think I was doing it while I was lying in bed and then I'd like get tempted to fall back asleep. Really? So if Did I take you myself, ever fall asleep? I didn't doing fall asleep but I yeah. would get halfway through a page and then be like. Oh, it's oh. like meditating lying down. You're you can't kidding do yourself. You can't You're kidding yourself. you got to get yourself out of bed. Yeah. And then like maybe I'll go to the bathroom, splash a bit of water on my face and then mm. I can do my writing. Splashing the water on the face is that I realised uh, maybe th- three years ago I was making a video and uh, th- there were some parents and they were getting their kids ready for bed yeah. and they're like, oh, okay, everyone, let's clean your eyes, clean your eyes. And what? they're like, they get it like, you know, cleaning, like close your eyes and clean it. I'm like, I've never cleaned my eyes before. Clean your eyes. Clean oh. your eyes, like clean it, like all the sleep, like just let's get all the gunk off it. Getting up just, in the morning or going to bed? I was going to bed. I think that's just a family quirk. I think at night, I mean, in the morning, like you can rub the, the yeah. sleep out of but your But you, is it well, actually like is, a as a, as, a fa- as a father, I think you you tell your kid, <laughs> like I tell, wash your dicky. And he, and he, <laughs> why has it always come to Cox <laughs> and you? Because who teaches you to do this? <laughs> I got to tell my son for the first couple of years of his life, you got to wash your dick. Because he wouldn't know. I he guess. wouldn't know. And so he's, what, he does yeah. this. And then I start <laughs> now. His eyes are just callous. Under your arms. Under your arms. Under your arms. So it's like. It will get there. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a thing that soon down the track. Isn't that funny? You, you won't need t- to be told like to these do these things this. that we take for granted. That you, you would see it. Like who taught you, bro? You have to, yeah. Someone has to teach you that. Who yeah. taught you? How oh, often, man. when you guys are washing your hair, do you like get out of the shower and realize that you still got shampoo in? I've or done it a couple of times. Oh, Under really? the arm for me. Yeah, because I like to just uh, let it sit and then I yeah. get to do my other stuff. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, the hair, the hair one hasn't happened to me. I don't really. Think, I don't wash my hair that much. I don't no, know if you that's don't a weird have much admit, hair. But you got no, solid hairline yeah, and thanks, dense man. hair. Uh, but how often you are you getting hair a haircut? Yet. For for every four weeks. Where do you go? Go to Beef's Barbers in Richmond. They pay the same, mate. Which is the quite beef good. Bar- no, I wouldn't know. You asked no, I wouldn't know. I did. I, <laughs> I wanted you to say a barber. Oh, <laughs> well, it is a barber. No, it is a hipster barber. You get a beer. You know all that. You get a beer. I can't go there. I get anxiety around the masking. If you I want, want a beer, beer, the answer is no. And the, yeah, Scott, just a place. No. Whatever your barber, no, drunken yeah. the drunken barber on Smith Street. I was just so panicked. That it was in the name, bro. Yeah, you, they <laughs> they didn't hide but it. I do a free beer. I just wanted it to be like. <laughs> I just didn't want us. I don't know. Um, this, I mean, this is a hard question for me to ask, and I'm asking you. Oh, here we go. So I don't I don't have the answer specifically for me, but in terms of forming that sort of habit and why you show up each day and mm-hmm. do the thing that you do, what have you identified what it is for you? Yeah, I think, I think I started it because, I mean, I've always been one that's kind of been a little bit, I guess, obsessed with this idea of making yourself a little bit better, mm. doing things that are going to be beneficial for your health and your fitness and your mind. And so I think I started because of that, but I'm also quite good at forming habits and stick, sticking with habits that I know make me feel better. Mm. And so once I'd done it for, I think I sort of realised it had been three or four months and then... I was like, oh, I think this is helping. I'm not laughing at you, Pete. I'm That's laughing okay. at this fucking gronk to the left I of didn't you. Know that it Did a mouthful of his chimichangas. Just holding a seven by seven centimetre <laughs> piece of throat at his chimichangas. <laughs> 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 I, didn't, I didn't realise it was going to be crunchy. Because the thing is... <laughs> it's fried! No, but the, one, the way they're set up, they're not all crunchy. You get that? It's like some of it's crunchy, some of it's not. Anyway, sorry, mate. Sorry. No, it's all right. I just, I think once I got to a, a point where it was three or four months, and then maybe I, I think I might have gone on a holiday and I didn't do it. And I've like noticed that I had more, mm. I guess, cloud and anxiety mm. in my head and was like, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So what if I kept doing it? And so I, I just sort of yeah. kept doing it. And I've experimented with, you know, writing three pages, writing mm. one page, not writing and like all of those different things. And at the yeah. moment, just writing one page every morning, it just is a habit that for me is worth doing. And sometimes it leads to a blog idea. Sometimes it leads to a podcast idea. 99% of the times it's just crap. Mm, mm. But I just, I don't know, I feel there's, better because of it. There's probably been a million blog posts about this topic in yeah. terms of 30 days is the number of days yeah. to form the habit, yeah. the pathways. What do you think about that? I don't know if it's 30 days. It's At least 28 days, 20, but 20 I think it days. turned out to be a bit of a myth. Something I've, <laughs> something I've been into recently is there's this framework, the Gretchen Rubin podcast. She has mm. a podcast, but she has this framework. It's called, called The Happiness Project It or is, something? Yeah. yeah. But she has this thing called The Four Tendencies. And it's not like those personality profiles that trust to pigeonhole you, but it's basically how we respond to expectations. Mm. And there's four different ways that we respond. And the way that I happen to respond is if I make a promise to myself or if someone else 
like says that you need to do this thing, mm. I'm what they call an upholder. And so I'm just really good at upholding my promises. <sighs> see, I'm, I'm not an upholder. Yes, yeah, this most, is my problem. So most people are what uh, they call... Rebel, uh, is it? I'm a rebel, rebel. There's questioner, there's upholder, and there's obliger. So most people need someone else mm. to hold them accountable. Yeah, That's why people like coaches and mentors and all these sorts of things because we need that accountability. I think I'm, I think I'm one of the rarer cases of if I commit to something like a New Year's resolution... I know I can kind of just stick to it. And I, I don't know why or how. It's just... You're an upholder. I'm an upholder. So and does that mean what that I do. you're more careful about the news result? Because I'm very like, yes, yeah, bang, bang. When I'll I just do all news exactly. resolutions. So I heard yours and it was, like, it was giving me anxiety because yeah. I was like, there's no way. Like you can't possibly do all that. That's yeah. just annoying. Yeah. But you can't <laughs> tell him because he, so he was exactly. a friend. He was like, yeah. nah. Tell yeah, me what to, it was yeah. like three hours of reading, Stop four hours of writing. Like, yeah, yeah, How yeah. are you going to do all these things? Yeah, you're projecting. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's very true. That was a, that was probably the best impersonation that Tommy's ever done. We've had Lynn. We've had yeah, Tommy. Exactly. Josh, yeah, it's it's yeah. perfect. You do Lynn. I do you. Yeah, no, it makes <laughs> sense. It sounds like the best party. Um, uh, the so the the morning the morning pages. Mm-hmm. You're very strict. You're very strict on that. The other thing I noticed is. You're very strict on your diet. Yeah. Because I was talking about like, man, how am I going to be lean? How can I be lean? And you're when like, you were saying you wanted to be gaunt. Yeah. I, oh, gaunt. yeah absolutely. I stand by that. I stand by you that. You don't stand by absolutely. being sick. No, not but sick, but just sort of like. What is, gaunt is directly related to sick people. You don't no. want to be gaunt. Or people no. who have been severely ill. No. Seriously. I, I think that there is something nice I about I told you my grandfather was gaunt after yeah. the World War I know. II when but he was captured for two years. I know. But the thing is, it's the, it's more like the I'm not overdoing the food. Like Gaunt says, I've got enough control that I only eat what I need to survive. If you're Gaunt and you're dead, you've overdone it. <laughs> if you're Gaunt and still living, you're probably just, you're on the cusp. But what's the difference between not eating enough and eating too much? They're what both what a about What about the option? Because that's what we do have. The option of being... Fit and healthy, mm. and like strong, you, lean. Like lean. Lean is the word. Yeah, yeah. sure. But you Optimal, have like a lot of like fish. your body. A person who's gaunt, unless it's from Isn't eating a shitload of exercise, and they're actually in that stage of mm. they've worked so hard, they're still fit and gaunt. But what about being an optimal engine? Yeah, this is it. just a, just being healthy. We're just a <laughs> vessel, dude. Yeah, and if you can have a good vessel, yeah, I get it. But, uh, my point wasn't about my diet; it was about <laughs> Peter Shepherd's diet. Pete, what's you actually like? Do you have rules around this? Because you're not like he made the rule 20 years ago and he's upheld. No. <laughs> That's not. It hasn't been I, that long because it was Chelsea that sort of set you on this path, wasn't I it? I definitely have her to thank. I I started learning and understanding a lot more about food and fitness and health before mm-hmm. I met her. But then she's like to the next level of awareness of what to eat and what not to mm-hmm. eat. And again, it comes from the same place of the writing is like if I can set myself up to be fitter and healthier and happier and just feel better mm-hmm. and have more energy, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And so when I realised like the, the aha moment of, holy shit, having four bits of toast in the morning and then two sandwiches for lunch and then having another bit of toast when I get home from work. A lot of bread. That's why I'm always tired because yeah. I've just had so many carbs, so mm. many dense carbs that you just don't need. Mm. So once I like had that aha moment and I started reducing that, I was like, oh, I feel better. Mm. Interesting. Let me learn more about this. And mm. so isn't it I, fucked up though how like that's really easy for you but the idea, like straight away, I'm like, yeah, but I can make a phone call. Yeah, and totally. You can't. Exactly. So what, this, everyone's why, got their is it, Isn't it weird though that it's like it's it's like doing a podcast every mm. weekday is really hard for some people. It's easy for me. Mm. Yeah. Is it lim- is this limiting beliefs? Like, is this we so for instance something that I've always said is if it's in my house, I'll fucking eat it. And I've said that for a long time, yeah. but I've, it's only really you have, recently. You would have died at my mum and dad's place with all <laughs> I the don't do wheels. It. I, at my mum and like my, my mum and dad's place, they've got stuff. We now have a snack cupboard that, for some reason, we just started. Amy and I are on this no sugar during the week, yeah, which sometimes falls off. But we've actually started keeping naughty treats that we have on the you weekend. Save them for the weekend, and we haven't been touching them. And I'm like, fuck! All this needs for me to do is form a new belief that's. If it's in the house, I don't have to eat it. Yeah, I choose to eat it or something like that. Yeah, it's a and choice. And so, yeah, so it, there are. That's what I remember doing. Like when I did my coaching course, um, it was always like, "What are your beliefs? Write them all down mm. and then challenge them because mm. they're just you've just formed them in some." Yeah, it's a story. Like yeah. every single thing that we have in our head is a story. And I have heard you guys mm. talk numerous times about 
there's the opposite of every story is also yeah. true for mm-hmm. someone. So yeah. like whatever you believe, someone else thinks you're irrational and whatever they believe, you think maybe they're irrational. And mm-hmm. so we're all irrational beings in some way. Mm. So how do you reframe the phone thing? How could you do a month? Myself. Could you do a month where it's like I'm not going to do text message? Like go old school. I think so. Like if I'd I be really like an older person where they're like, don't do text, just call me. I think if I really wanted to, it would have to be. Uh, it would have to be clear to me on what's it for. But mm. if I really wanted to, I could. I'm sure say to myself, do phone calls instead of text messages. Yeah, I. I just don't know if I have. Like but, the but the way that belief you, in it's going to help me. How is it going to help? Me? Well, I guess that's like the, we well, had if a it's conversation. Not hindering you. Then maybe that's why you're saying. But isn't that it? the so same like argument the- that I make about like not going to the psychologist? Where I'm like, I don't think like, I don't think it's going to add anything mm. right now. Yeah. But is that just part of the anxiety in the story? Well, maybe. But I think there's got to be in order to motivate anyone to do anything, you have to be clear in like, what am I getting? Like, what's the benefit? Mm. Why am I doing this? Otherwise, you're gonna not you're not going to do it. Yeah. Well, I think we can all build a case for and against. Yeah. For our own problems, right? It's like you can challenge your thinking around that. Mm. And I'm sure you could come up with 10 new things, more leads, yeah. more interaction with others that will connect me with other, you know, whatever. True, it's yeah, like yeah. there's a bunch. Could be a better, I mean, who knows? Probably could be the case that Chelsea and I could have a better relationship if we spoke mm. every day on the phone instead mm. of sending 20 messages a day on the phone or whatever. The good thing is that you're allowing the, the phone call to have cut through when you're ready to make the call. Oh, it's going to be a is, big phone call. Yeah, but the thing is, you need, <laughs> but the problem is, can we have the exclusive, please? Yeah, when I'm ready, <laughs> I'll give you guys a nod. <laughs> but I think you need yeah, to do it like that. He wouldn't give us a call. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> no, <I'll say laughs> when I'm ready, I'll give you guys <laughs> a nod. How do we, we have, know about the nod? <laughs> I'll text you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll text you when I'm ready. <laughs> but the, there is a um, there is a risk in you being fought. This is going to take it dark for a sec. Okay. Mm. Uh, just prepare. <laughs> Pete on the camera is like very smiley right now, so I'm just preparing him for for the dark bit. No, someone dies, something happens, it's going to force you to make a call. Totally. Maybe you're better off getting it out of your system before the negative thing just so – because otherwise someone dies, you have to mm. call Chelsea about mm. it, then it's only just reaffirming that the only time calls Wasn't happen bad. is is bad stuff. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I, I, can, I can almost guarantee the first time if and when I call Chelsea – She'll Bad probably news. answer and say who died. Like, yeah. you know, like it'd be like, what happened? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, what I love that you say, Josh, is bring the pain forward. You know, in all the things we're doing, what's the hardest mm. bit? What, what, how can we do that now mm. to then free us into this next space? Mm. Well, yeah, if, if you, yeah, if you do it, it's like, it's, it's like that stretching thing. But the thing is that if I applied that to the gym, if I applied that to all these things, it yeah. would be really good. I guess we just make these choices that it's like, this isn't. For me. Mm. And it's interesting. Like, I, I like that idea of you do the hard part first. Yeah. I heard we, we talk about that a lot in the old MBA. Yeah. Do the hard part first. But I think to your point is, I think I wrote about this recently where we almost forget what our unique strengths are. And so like I work with a lot of creatives and performing artists actually on Broadway in New York. And what they don't realize is that getting up in front of a thousand people and performing mm. every day is incredibly daunting and scary for so many people. Oh, and yeah. They're like, what do you mean? This is what we do. Yeah. Whereas you know, you can pick up the phone and have a phone call and I'm here like, I could never do that. And mm. then I can stick to morning pages, but you're like, how do you do that? Like we all have something that we're good at. Sometimes we get too obsessed with comparing ourselves and beating ourselves down and mm. it's kind of worth looking at, well, what am I good at? What if I just double down on that instead? And I can live with not being on the phone and not making phone calls because I'm doing all this good stuff over here. Mm. I identified yesterday when we we're talking about the, the lease and not reading the lease, how much pushback I have from reading something because I feel like when I read it, I'm going to internalise it. So emails, I don't like reading. Even when you texted me this morning. You didn't want to open it. No, I read it once and then I sort of forgot exactly what you said. But I just wrote back what I was thinking at the time. Interesting. Because I didn't, for whatever reason, I'm like, I just don't want to, I don't want to have to take in every word. <laughs> I mean, what's, what, what the fuck's wrong with me? I don't know. Do I you know think there's that? So I do this too, actually. Is sometimes you read an email and you're like, I can't. I can't, I need to think about that more. Yeah. And then you leave it for a day and it's like weighing on you and it's oh, it worse, and worse and worse and mm. worse and worse and worse. And I've heard someone talk about this on a podcast of, I think they called it be the shark that like a shark doesn't read an email and go, well, a shark doesn't read an email at all. Yeah. But the point is the shark doesn't see a fish and go, I'll come look, back, I'll come back and eat that in 24 hours. It just goes, yeah. oh, I'm going to go and eat that. So it's yeah. like you read the email. They don't just star respond. it for later. No, well, exactly. <laughs> Unless it's Greg, uh, Greg Norman. He's <laughs> yeah, the shark. Yes. I wonder if he's on email. 
He would Actually, be. Greg Norman, there's some interesting stuff about him. Uh, he brushes his teeth with one leg standing up, like one uh, leg up. Really? Like can, you, can you confirm that, Mr. Norman? <laughs> that do really you even know who – hang on, mate. Do you know who this guy uh, – what's, what's his name? Greg Norman. <laughs> do you know, know what he does? You don't know who he is. The shark? That's great. He's 19. I always confuse Greg That's Norman amazing. with uh, Paul Hogan. <laughs> Yeah, well, because okay, really? you can imagine Paul Hogan, the famous Australian actor, would play, play Greg Norman. Greg Norman, <laughs> Greg Norman. Yeah, he, he definitely has that the vibe. shark. Minister ninety seven can tell us because there might be. We've probably lost a whole lot of people with the Greg Norman. <laughs> so go, so Greg, Nor- type in Greg Norman quirks, brush teeth. Oh, we're not saying who it is because he's going to okay. Yeah, reveal. He'll, he'll work out. Wait, what? Do, what? Do, what are you doing? Well, he needs to discover who Greg Norman is. Oh, did we not say? No, th- I'm okay. saying we won't say because old mate will have this moment. He's gone deep here. He's looking. He's he's really I know that guy. <laughs> I've realised him. He's got a b- good tan. American <laughs> nah, accent. I actually don't recognise Still hasn't got it. Never seen him. You found nah, it. So did you find anything about... <laughs> so he's a golfer? Yeah. Well, he was one of the best golfers in the world. Nah, I can't see anything. Nothing about that. Okay. I, I, about I have heard that. Nothing. I actually... He plays golf. Yeah. I think it might be in... Um, <laughs> can If you've got uh, Tim Ferriss's book, Tribe of Mentors, open up to the Greg Norman one. I, I think it's in oh. there. Because I think he's been asked on on that one potentially. Mm. How do you get good to work on balance? Doing? Yeah, I think like when and I feel like like Pilates and stuff. See, this is a good example of something mm. that if I identify as good for me, I'll start doing. Like okay. I'll, I'll potentially start doing that if I. <laughs> okay. there's enough evidence behind it being something. I'll good. give you one. I'll give you one. Brush your teeth with, with the opposite left hand. hand. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. I did that, and then I, think I gave up. It was just annoying. Like you, <laughs> not yeah. brushing properly. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's interesting seeing the. So the development of a kid, my son, yeah. seeing which hand he's going to go with. So has he got a preferred one? Left. Wow. Yeah. For holding his dicky, is that what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't judge, mate. <laughs> it just switches <laughs> left or right. If you use your other hand, it feels like someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> a creepy. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine once told me that. I don't know. It was well, a story. Yeah. Said, yeah. Why, are you pointing, why are you pointing to me? I've never said anything like that in my life. Well, that would be a piece of advice. What what context would we even say something like that? That is absolutely absurd. Well, the other day you guys were talking about porn and stuff, weren't you? Oh, uh, yeah. I was saying I, 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 I QP. Mm. You quit I porn, quit yeah. porn. Yeah. yeah. It's been great. I fucking love it. I don't know, but maybe it's like... I don't know. Well, no, but I don't, what I'm saying is maybe the the getting off it or the starting to do something, mm-hmm. this new f- thing that you've done, there's empowerment when you when you actually see it through for a while and then yeah. you're like, it's not me, guys. Like I'm identifying as the person that doesn't watch it now because yeah. well, it that actually is helping me stay off well, it. So what you said before is like these things you realise are choices all of a sudden. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, I have the agency to change my mind and do something else instead. Yeah. It's like... That's actually quite empowering because well, mm. I think too often we get stuck in we think we have to do this, we have to do that, we have to watch porn or we have mm. to do whatever to make ourselves the happy. Tommy was forced, yeah. That's how it all <laughs> a happened. friend of mine, this is a belief, he said, I, I, um, I can't have sex unless I watch porn. Wow. Bec- because he watched so much porn. Oh, my God. What but does he's that like, mean? Wait, he has to watch porn during sex? I to even like to get into it. He's like, I can't get it up now. Wow. Based on uh, like... What I, will say, I will say, not watching porn, you can use your imagination a bit better. But that's pretty fucking... If you get to the point where it's... Oh, that's like, horrible, oh, man. Yeah. I, that Excuse was me, not, I just yeah. need to yeah. pull my phone out that and check something. Yeah, what no, it's horrendous. like with a partner, right? Wow. Yeah, bit of and foreplay, nothing. <laughs> and so that's a real problem. I didn't have, a, I didn't have that. Yeah. I was just like, maybe I should stop this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> that, I, think, yeah I think that's the equivalent of saying like... Uh, <laughs> At least I'm not doing heroin. It's got it's a little bit of that vibe. Yeah, I can't make phone calls, but at least I'm not doing heroin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. D- definitely, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what I was going. That's really, that's really, really yeah. thrown me. The are you still doing TJ the the sleep? Uh, sorry, the uh, waking up in the morning, meditating, meditating. Yeah, how I'm many on, days in a row? <clears throat> well, I'm on this. So I've done out of the app 37 days. I'm on you day, Sam Harris's. Yeah, Sam Harris is. Yeah, I'm 12 days in. I haven't missed a day for this what month. What do you mean 12? Oh, okay. Um, because I, what I did was I did it for, say, two, three weeks and then I stopped and then for a couple of days and I just was sporadic. But this month I've just been on it. And it's, yeah, it's How great. do you find the app? Because I've been using the same one. It's awesome. What day are you on? I think I finished the 60 days. Ah, fuck. And now All I'm right. on. <laughs> 60 days. When do you do it? Just in the after Every morning after, pages? After my morning pages, yeah. Oh, that's nice. So I do it. I've done the sixty days, and now there's a daily lesson that just comes up, so it's oh, amazing. fresh every day. Yeah, yeah, great. So I've got I'm um, yeah thirty seven in, and yeah. so Sam's and talking in all of them. Yeah, it's him. Yeah, he's like, he's a like I've used Headspace in the past, mm-hmm. and I really really liked Headspace, but he's like very he almost intellectualizes it in a way. Yeah. I actually quite like it, but he when he says stuff like 
look at your look at your head. You know mm, when he says mm, that, mm. and you're like, what? Look at your. And he's sort of saying, staring in a space. Now look at your head. Mm. You're like, how do I do that? Anyway, it's. I he's saying right. pinpoint. So say, like the thought you have or yeah. where you feel like you're thinking from, yeah. where is that? It's amazing. And so, yeah, and so it's like this is all these feelings and everything that's going on, senses, smells, sight, hearing, is all happening in consciousness. Mm-hmm. And so it's like where is this? And so it, I think he tries to help you challenge what you believe is consciousness, yeah. you know, that we're in behind these two, you know, with the, these eyes behind this head. Yeah. And so I, I like that scientific approach that Me he too, takes yeah. to sort of, have you realised that what we believe and what we think from what we've grown up with is not the way it is? Do you think it's the ultimate branding exercise for him? Like being the voice of all mm. these people's meditation. Oh, he's been doing it for years. But don't you think that that's sort of like, it's it, like your uh, your mum's got like a whole uh, yeah, meditation thing. She's into it. Yeah, right? yeah. I'll, I'll link you. And yeah, so get around do, it. Would, like is, do they then become these gurus or like the, you know, what's what's it called? What are the, Guru. G- guru. Like is that a thing? Like I wonder if that's a thing where it's like uh, people are building these relationships with Sam mm. based on him being in their head. Like maybe there's something yes. the Daily Talk Show. Well, I was going to say it's pretty similar to a podcast, isn't yeah. it? Mm. In the sense that if people listen to you every day, they feel like they get to know you a little bit, mm-hmm. even though they've never met you. I mean, I, I, this is the thing, right? Uh, people like Seth Godin, or if you go sort of back, people like Gandhi, or th- these super prolific people hmm. at the time of their existence they were doing the thing so sam harris might be that guy right that hmm. in like you're saying in t- 20 years time we're looking back at sam it's like he taught so many people wo- like he's leaving it's so legacy. hard to see though but don't you think because it's like he now. wears the same things as us he like has an yeah. iphone yeah, i yeah. guess like <laughs> yeah i know i think it's harder to have to be the person in history that made huge, significant change Mm. other than these monsters like Jeff Bezos and stuff. They're the new pioneers of people, you know, people that be remembered. I don't know if Jeff Bezos is a monster, but... Well, think about it. He's created a monster. He's the owner of a monster. I just got a notification of an Amazon. He's a fucking monster. He heard what we're talking (laughs) about. He knew, he preempted me mentioning his name. What about the Julian Assange? Do you see Julian Assange being... Like I carried saw out today in the. Did you e- see the video? Ecuadorian, yeah. something or other. I yeah. watched yeah. a four-minute um, subtitled video of the Ecuadorian president this talking. This is always about the risk with Tommy. You'll read the, you'll watch the four-minute thing. No, it was great. It was interesting hearing why they kicked him out, yeah. and I can't even relay it. But it was like a bunch of small stuff, a bunch of it's stuff he was cats doing. Like on he was use, he didn't want to use their internet and all this stuff. Uh. I mean, they supported him for like seven years or something. I don't know much about it, but he got a buffet breakfast most mornings, I'd say. (laughs) He's doing (laughs) all right for six years. Do you reckon he had like full bed and and breakfast? Surely not. Here's your thing. (laughs) Well, I did see like him getting carried out freaked me out because it was just like you have this idea of what he looks like Mm. in your head based on like a few years ago and he's like crazy beard. He looks like David Letterman, what Letterman looks like now, like crazy. So, yeah, but he hopefully looked, he looked like a little, <laughs> like, you know, like the, the, they got him. This is the thing. Don't do that when you're getting taken out. Cause they're going to take the one frame that you actually look like a small little marsupial. You know what I mean? Yeah. But <laughs> try and look as strong as possible. Yeah. When yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pull a Conor McGregor. He's just, <laughs> yeah, just running. He's just looking I'll staunch. take myself out guys. Any snap, any frame. Even if you're capturing a thousand mm-hmm. frames a second, he's looking good. Have you ever <laughs> been handcuffed? Never yeah. been handcuffed. Really? I've been taken to the police station for questioning. Have you? My uh, brother was doing scouts and uh, his uh, friend's dad was a security guard and he had handcuffs, which – why the fuck did the security you guard should, have handcuffs? I don't think they're allowed. Well, I don't think citizens arrest, arrest, yeah, yeah, this was like in the 90s or whatever, but uh, the kid put the handcuffs on my brother, but they didn't have the key. Oh and so they were at like a leisure type centre that was attached to the shopping centre. I remember mum being – Mortified because my brother James had to be walked through the shopping centre with handcuffs on. <laughs> Could you impersonate her being mortified? I, I don't know what she would, wouldn't have said anything. Okay, just I'm to absolutely look. mortified, <laughs> Josh. <laughs> but the, but I remember my uh, yeah my teacher in grade six. He as a side hustle mm. uh, was a security guard at Endeavour Hills shopping really? centre, and he was telling us how yeah he couldn't like because we were pumped about it. We're like man, like did you tackle anyone? He's like. Security guards literally can't do anything. They just like have yeah. to walk and follow oh, really? and be like, yeah, can't do much. I was big on um, 
uh, citizen arrests. I you remember really just being, no, 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 no. I just remember being so fascinated. Wasn't about it like citizens arrest? I remember as a kid, it was a great bit of like trivia that you had. Of like, yeah. do you know anyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can arrest anyone? Yeah. Like, oh, shut up, Tommy. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 look it up. No, anyone? Yeah. I remember. Arrested? Can you look up citizens arrest, Mister Ninety Seven? I want to know what the sort of the ins and outs are. I would definitely be someone to. Do you think I could do a citizen? No, nah, definitely not. I don't think you have the skills. To manipulate someone who would be in need of, I think if you arrest. were to doing, if you were doing the physical bit, and I was doing, the <laughs> I knock him out, and I think you, you just stand no, no. there. Yeah. Take, you can have this one. Mate. I think with both <laughs> of us there, take him in, Josh. No, I'll just like be very stern. We need to do. We need to start um, BJJ Brazilian Jiu Jitsu if we want to really be mm. capable have of the citizen's arrest. No, nah. I've done. <laughs> bit, not not to. Not I haven't gone to do a class. Mm. I want to. I want to buy the full outfit. It's all the rage at the moment. I mean, full body workout and like great to burn mm, fat and all that. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, if if there's one fighting form or mm. form of self defense, BJJ. Mm. Yeah. What do you What do you do exercise wise? I think? go to a CrossFit gym in Richmond. Mm. Do you stretch? Yeah, I do a bit of stretching. I'm trying to do more of that recently because I'm quite long and tall, and I just mm. am always so uncomfortable and sore. Yeah, mm. so I've been seeing a physio and a and a. I guess he's a yoga instructor as well. Mm -hmm. He's got a master's and so he comes at it from a very physiotherape physiotherapeutic background. Mm -hmm. I think I just made up a word. <laughs> yeah, I like and that. He's trying to help me there, like loosen up my back and my mm -hmm. hips and stuff. So yeah, I do a bit of stretching as well. Have you done the magnesium spray? Not the spray, but I've done the, like the and flotation the dance tanks. that goes along with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's probably like a bit well, you of don't believe the bullshit. Sprays. What are you, a little spray spritz? Yeah. <laughs> If you, I mean, I've taken deadlifting like, two hundred kilos every week. You probably, mm. just, it's not going to do much. How many magnesium tablets have you taken? I usually take one at okay. night just before yeah. bed. Uh -huh. Yeah, but you got to be careful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Have you made this mistake? Yeah, I made this mistake. What? Well, I took three and was woken up by my own erection. <laughs> yeah. No, that was just oh, the what hand erection. That's, really? Yeah. What were oh, you no, going to say? I was going to say like diarrhea. I think it, oh, it no, can no, bring no, on no. diarrhea. No, because apparently I learned this. <laughs> I, I Googled it. Yeah, it was like painful. It's a thing. And the it's reason, actually a thing. Really, we yeah, it because out. an erection, I've said this, Mr. 97, do you remember me teaching you this? The re what, a, what, a, <laughs> what an erection, <laughs> what a, yeah. what an erection the, actually the, the is. The relaxation of the muscles. Yeah, the erection is actually the relaxation of the muscle, not the stiffness. Interesting. I'll tell you right so now, you I got into a conversation with my wife. She's like, what is your dick? Like, what is it? It's a muscle. No, it's not. What? Really? No. Yeah, it's not a muscle. It's what not a it? muscle. Let me, let me. So what are you going to Google It's not a muscle. That? It's like um, incognito. blood rush <laughs> incognito. What? <laughs> it's your phone, mate. He's you can look up dick. It's fine. No, but it's not a muscle. I think that's where it's just sold as like this, you know. The, the main Can you muscle. look up magnesium and erection just to check? But no, seriously, three was. I also, also want citizens arrest, Mister Ninety Seven. So to find out, I hope you've done two browsers. Well, I can tell you what I'd say if I was arresting someone. What would you say? Excuse me, stay where you are. You are under citizen or citizens arrest. Mm. And that's what I'd say. But I'd very stern. Do you think they would just laugh and walk off? Yeah, yeah. I would. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, right, oh, mate. I'd say freeze. <laughs> freeze. Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> they can reckon? run. This is the thing. Do you chase them? I could imagine you'd be pretty intense about it too. Yeah. And why would I you wouldn't. do it? I think the, there's a few decisions that need to be made at what, what would, point. And what would, yeah, what would be the thing that would make you do it? Mm. <laughs> I can tell you. You can go if you want, Josh. Uh, if there was. Hmm. If I felt like I could take them on, that's probably a <laughs> yeah. Good like one. they couldn't be a massive. Yeah. If it's sort of yeah. If yeah. it's like someone who's if they got weapons, that's not a good yeah, thing. Yeah. Not great. If I'm in a car, hundred percent would run them over. I feel strong. Yeah. <laughs> like you? if yeah if if someone if someone that's legal, dude. If that's someone's doing something legal, stress, that's if running someone, to hit and run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you no, but I don't run away. I stay there. Is it a little would, would I get yourself. done? Would I get done if I saw someone breaking into a car? My own car. So I was thinking about this uh, a while ago when we in our um, cage at our old apartment block, there was uh, people stealing shit. And I thought oh, yeah. if I was to come home and I could see them at the cage, could I drive into them and pin them to the cage? Um, you could, but they, they'd, probably, they'd probably get away with the crime. Based on me it, doing that. Yeah, it's fairly aggressive. Like okay. it's fairly fucking... Extreme force mm -hmm. for someone just looking through a cage. Is there something in the police force where you're allowed to go like one level above the act of violence mm -hmm. that they're sure? 
yeah, ring. I don't know how it applies so to I a citizen, can, but I think well, it's... they have a weapon and it's drawn. And then it's, it's, this is why it's murky, right? Well, a I have to steal person, from two they, of have them. To, they have to justify it. They have to go up against yeah. well, this is the case, recently. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. 97's got some... Here we go. We've got some yeah, news. so uh, with the citizen's arrest, mm-hmm. good start. You, the force you can apply has to be reasonable and proportionate to what they are applying. So proportionate, yeah. So I think with okay. police, they can go above proportion yeah. or whatever that is. Okay. So, so it's like I would in have self-defense to or to prevent the uh, offender from escaping. So if someone was pinning, breaking so into your... I could cage, break into their cage. Into the <laughs> 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 Wait there, I'm going to break into your yeah, cage. It's yeah. a long... Yeah. You couldn't run into them. Though. But, no, I could. I could, you could if, block, I if they were them, in your cage and you... Drive the f- car up, just if, block them. If I just block them, if yeah. I pinned them, but they no, were you, fine. Oh, mate, you don't know how, what, when it's really hurting them. Okay, that's enough. You got me. You got, I'm pinned. I'm pinned. I'm now. pinned. You've pinned me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. They're all going to say ooh, ooh. And on the <laughs> erection thing? Uh, uh, yeah, it's just tissue and magnesium does cause tissue to relax. But to, is, is there an actual <laughs> connect? I just want to... Show that I'm not bullshitting. The there is a connection between, between taking magnesium and, yeah. and erection. I did not know that. Mm. And for some reason, I told like the whole family. And then when I was staying at mum and dad's, every time, every night I was having magnesium. Mum would say, "Don't take too many," <laughs> <laughs> which is just a bit filthy. That's, that's awkward. Basically, your mum yeah. said to you, "Don't get an erection." Yeah, tonight, don't Josh. get an erection tonight. Yeah, which is, Here you go, Josh. Which is actually awkward. a very effective way of not getting an erection. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just mum mentioning yeah. anything to do with them. <laughs> Yeah, go. Uh, magnesium is essential for metabolism of metabolism. Ni- nitric mm. oxide, which helps in penile erection. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So you could okay. use it as like a natural Viagra, maybe. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Because yeah. apparently, uh, no, but there's a big, there's a, uh, doctors are prescribing Viagra at like a huge scale in the US, I heard. Really? Yeah. Like for older, older dudes. And it's like a bit of a, it's a bit of a problem. Same with like a lot of the ADHD drugs and things like that. To yeah. Is it a problem is it though? Adderall in America? Is yeah, that Adderall, 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 yeah. yeah. Adderall speed though. It's like. That's, that's, what, that's what ADHD medication yeah. is yeah. essentially, yeah. Mm. Mm. But it's not really that big of a problem for old blokes. What? You just need a, need a helping hand. Yeah. No, but it's, not, I bet it's probably not good for your like heart and stuff yeah, like that. Not, but who owns Viagra? Who? Pfizer. It's like a massive, Pharma, yeah. massive Pharma Pharma company. Ph- pharmaceutical company. Which basically mm. runs America. What's like Pfizer worth? I always love to look up the net worth of companies. And then can you look up Fitbit stock? P- PF, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, P- P- yeah, PF. Yeah, anyway. He's Mr. 97. I'm yeah. sure he's, yeah, he's, he knows. He knows. He knows. He's, he's he just knows. laughing over there. Do, like, you, um, do you take much medication? Are you like a no, none. Panadol and stuff? Do you ever take Panadol? I took Panadol and Panadine. Last week, actually, because I had, I was wiped with this virus mm. last week, and you still managed to walk with me on the Wednesday. I did reco- recover. You were recovered by that. Then. Was that was part of the reason I had to move Monday? I was ah, I couldn't. Right. I could hardly do Monday, so I I took Panadine, which is Panadol and Codeine, is Paracetamol pan- and Codeine. Is that Panadine Fort or something? No, that's the next level up. Uh, okay. So I had Panadine as prescribed by a doctor because I was unable to move from bed basically for what was four it? days. I just had a virus. Do you have a family mm, doctor that you go to? Or what it was. Do you go to the same? The problem is I don't have a family doctor. So every time I go to a doctor, I've got to be like, if I, if I start from scratch, I'll be like, yeah, where, yeah. where do I go? Yeah, I used to go <laughs> to the 24 hour clinic if I wanted like a medical cert. That's fine. What, what's wrong with you? Go to a doctor, any doctor. Doesn't no, matter. but it's good to have one that knows you. So I've, I've had one growing up. Mm. That Dr. Baum, that was my. Was it? Doctor, but he's in Endeavour Hills, and mm. he would be basing all of his medical knowledge yeah. from me from being like eleven. Yeah, so it's a bit <laughs> I, different. I had one well, super relevant. Doctor Minogue in Brighton. He'd yeah. seen everything of mine. Everything. Well, yeah, you know, I get it. Go in, got yeah. twisted balls. Did that really you know? happen to you? Yeah, you can get twisted Ouch. balls. They just whoosh, and really it's so painful. Oh. Man. It's like they can untwist themselves, but sometimes oh. you need surgery. I didn't need surgery. <laughs> Thank God. It's um, it's full, it's on. full on. So what do you guys so do when bad. you need to go to a doctor now? How like, do you find a doctor? Ackland Street Medical Centre. There's like super clinics. Is it Paran Is it pretty clinic. rough? There's a couple there's of super clinics. In all, they're all bulk. Bi- I actually just go for bulk build. Yeah, I'm just like, I don't want to pay for this. Yeah. If I need a script for some something, which I don't, it's so rare, right? Yeah. yeah. But I, don't, I, there is, there's something nice about going to the same person, but it's hard nowadays. Like a lot of doctors, sur- uh, clinics. Move. Super high turnover. Yeah, I so I had one for a while, and then I went there one day, and he was gone. I was like, yeah. "All right, well, I guess you're no longer my doctor." Mm. So last week I was in Apollo Bay, and my my uncle was actually there, who's a doctor. Mm-hmm. So that was convenient. Oh, so that's great. That was a family doctor in the sense that he was. Oh, my yeah, uncle. that's yeah. good. 
What's the deal with having your uncle do it? Is that okay? I guess so. He's yeah. a well, he's not writing him a script for Viagra. No, when he's a codeine is oh, great. Codeine's fine. Pretty safe, yeah. So I, I that was when I to answer your question, mm. that was the last time I had medication. But apart from that, yeah, not at all. Um, I want to find out what you're excited about in the future, but I think we Ooh, to okay. finish off. But I want to know from Mister Nice Evan seventy billion. <laughs> Seventy much, billion dollars, yeah. Pfizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how that's much Pete's going to make this year. And Uber <laughs> is one one billion in comparison. Uh, no, one hundred billion. One hundred billion. billion. Wait, so Uber's, Uber's bigger Uber than Uber wants than Viagra. Pfizer Uber makes money though. I think, guys. Yeah. Mm. Uber's Uber so Uber Uber just in debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the moment, mm. Pfizer's yes. been around for a long they're time. They're making yeah. money, and they've been keeping us strong and hard for years. That should be their motto. Keeping us strong and hard for years. So you're going to Indonesia next week. Next yep. week, yep, going on a little holiday. So you go through Bali, but then when you get to Bali, where do you go from We're there? We're getting a boat across to the Gili Islands, mm-hmm. a place called Gili T. Cool, which should so be should be cool. Fly to Denpasar, and fly then to Denpasar. We have to stay a night, and then we get a boat over the next morning. Yeah, how far is the boat ride? Do you know? I think it's an hour and a half. Oh, that's not too ish. bad. So it's not too bad. Uh-huh. Not too bad. I'm okay on boats. Chelsea gets a bit seasick, so she's mm-hmm. a bit nervous, but. Do you know one recommendation? Don't do like the ginger travicam. You know, like there's two types. There's the natural yep. and then there's like the one that's like medical. Yeah. The ginger one was – I was – Was that uh, the natural one? Yeah, it's a natural yeah. one, ginger. right? And mum had said to me, don't go the natural <laughs> one. But I thought that might be the same part of her brain that can sometimes be like mm. outrageous. You know, old, yeah. like older people tend yeah. to – they've got a few – Every now and then they say yeah, something and you're yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You're was that racist? Yeah, or? Exactly. Uh, absolutely. Your words, <laughs> yes. Um, and so that was uh, that was one of them where I'm like, ah, you're just against mm. the natural thing, but I'm going to take it. And I was feeling so sick just chewing on this dumb fucking ginger tablet <laughs> yeah. being like. Gives you something to do. That's about it. That's probably it. Yeah, yeah. a little I, bit of a taste. I used to get car sick. Mum used to give me a piece of chewy and say, just chew that. Oh, Perfect. And stare straight ahead. Build I'd the belief. Along the Great Ocean Road and I'd just be staring straight ahead going, <laughs> Did it work or no? I mean, no, I still, not. Very <laughs> yeah. I still got um, very cast. As a business owner, what's what's the thoughts taking a holiday? Scary. Yeah? Super scary, yeah. I, uh, it's been something I've not done as a business owner. I've taken trips for but work, like work trips. So this is a long time in the making, I guess, and I've been thinking about it and trying to plan around it for quite a while. I will take my laptop and I'll probably do a little bit of work, but I'm yeah. going to try and do as little as possible. And do you continue your meditation, your pages? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I haven't landed on that yet. I have a tendency on a holiday to just sometimes do it and sometimes not, kind mm. of just see how I feel. Mm. I like to give myself – like I'm torn. On one hand, I know it helps me feel good. Yeah. But on the other hand, I kind of like to give myself permission to just do what I want on you a holiday. Reset. Yeah. yeah, so I'm sure I'll do it a couple of times a day or a couple of times during the two weeks, but – Probably not religiously every day. Mm. Will you listen to the podcast or do you think you'll have a break from the podca- I podcast? Our podcast. Okay. Our yeah. podcast. I, I think so. I'll still listen to podcasts. Yeah. yeah. I, I, like I went on, mm. even last week I went surfing with my dad for four days. and was like, it's going to be great. I'm going to switch off. I won't mm. do any technology. Yeah. And he's sort of walking around. I was like, oh, I may as well listen to the pod- podcast. You know, yeah, yeah. Put a podcast in. And so I'm looking at the surf, listening to a podcast. So it's still, you're still switching off and relaxing, but I enjoy listening to podcasts. So mm. I'm still going to listen to podcasts. Yeah. How long do you spend in the water when you go surfing? Uh, Anywhere from one hour to three hours probably mm-hmm. is pretty standard depending on how good the, the waves is it, are. Isn't it nice? It's like you're saying you're standing there looking and you're listening to podcasts, but it's the one time you actually disconnect. Yeah. You're focused, task orientated. It's like the single focus of paddling onto a wave and then the Great. focus of trying to maneuver on the wave. Yeah. And you're like, again, let's go again. Yeah. It's like uh, like skiing, I think. Skiing and snowboarding yeah. are much the Never same. Never been skiing or snowboarding. Oh, it's the or same. surfing. Oh, I went surfing in Phillip Island in year 10 camp. Yeah. Year 9 camp, actually. I'll put a photo up on the Instagram. How'd you go? Um, I remember being able to do it, which was good, but I was meant to do it in Queensland the following year and I was so excited that I decided to go bodyboarding yeah, so beforehand. I should I should preface all of this talk about surfing when I talk about it. As I, I was bodyboarding last yeah. week. Yeah, really? You got some big flippers though. Well, growing up, we, we, there was like a group of us kids growing up and it was like you either went surfing or bodyboarding and I got swept up in the bodyboarding crowd because at the time I thought oh, I can do more tricks on a bodyboard. I can barely stand up on a surfboard. Well, so maybe it wasn't even bodyboarding. What I was doing didn't have a board. Oh, no, it was this my is body. genuine with a body. So is you're talking about body surfing, I think. Body I call surfing, that. yeah. Different well, I tried it, nearly drowned. Really? So I ended up, there, we had to get two. So one person tried to, so I was screaming for help. <laughs> what? Was, and he thinks he can make a citizen's arrest. <laughs> not in the water, maybe not. 
But uh, <laughs> no, I was 16 and I was screaming. I got like caught in something, like a ripple. Like basically what it was was um, the water was hi- hitting me and every single time I would like try to get a breath, it would hit me again. Yeah. And so I was screaming for help, help and uh, the salt was fucking like scraping my throat as I was like screaming. Yeah. And then uh, a lifeguard came out, but because it was right on when the waves hit, their board went flying mm. and so they ended up getting like knocked away. And so another person, I had to get two lifeguards <laughs> to get me and then I like just go on the on the board and close my eyes and they get me to shore and I was like, they're like, oh, you can walk now, you can walk. And I'm like gr- still holding on. It's like this deep or whatever. Wow. And then I was like sort of like. Are you scarred from this? Yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, a lady, in the water since. Wow. <laughs> and so no, I was like, uh, you know, a bit sheepish or whatever and I'm like just sort of like limping. I feel exhausted because I thought I was going to die. And uh, a lady came up to me and she said, oh, my God, I can't believe that you were drowning. I thought you were waving. And she thought that was going to make me feel better. I was <laughs> yeah. like, this fucking lady. I was, <laughs> this so, lady. I was so annoyed about it. That's not what I need to hear. <laughs> but an hour, like uh, timing-wise, when you're surfing with uh, your dad or friends, do you sort of say, who calls it when it's like time to go oh, in? It's sort cup of, of a tea time. When, it, I, when I don't the know. Feeling comes. Going by feel, yeah. Do you, you ever do you bring on the cup of tea thing? Do you bring snacks? Is that like in the water? <laughs> the water <laughs> thing's probably a bit <laughs> not, a in water, no, not, not in no, the water. No, definitely not because <laughs> you have pockets. I just imagine for some <laughs> no, reason, no, no. like up and go. No, you would. I swear, I'd, I've seen an up and go ad. It's probably a commercial. Yeah. That would work. I'm sure people work. do it. I, I certainly don't. I'm no. pretty sure. Yeah, there's definitely an up and go commercial where he's done a wave and then he's like, Whoa. Wait. Time for it. You can go. wait. You can you can fucking wait. That's the best bit of it. No, I, so I used to love it. The, the up and goes. Or no, surfing. no, no. Getting out of the water. You know when you've got like your mouth has just been so salty. Oh, yes, I love it. And that. then I was cr- I would crave drinking water, but I'd crave peanut butter sandwiches. It was just a thing that like my white bread getting stuck yeah, on Yeah, just mum and dad would roof. make them, prepare yeah. them. It's funny so. that as a kid, like last week we were surfing like because as the sun was rising, and then it was that point where you're like, oh, I really feel like a coffee. Yeah, it was cold, so mm-hmm. we'd paddle in and. And we'd have a coffee. That From was where? Like, that was the equivalent. Like a thermos? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we had a little stove top and we'd boil a little kettle oh, and make a oh, that's cool. shit, yeah. French press. You know? yeah. yeah. Where did you Amazing. get the – wait, was this in your car or something? Dad's got it pretty decked out. They have a caravan, like an A van. So it's like a little flat van that lifts up like that yeah. and there's a bed and there's a stove and there's a kitchen in there. So like, good. Are both like, of you your stayed parents in that? teachers? You stayed I, that, in that? that was what I did, yeah. yeah. So they have, they have a separate bed. So there's a, the big bed and there's like the – Chair and table turns into a bed as well. So. Nothing's designed for a fucking like six that. foot. Oh, seven. it was uncomfortable. <laughs> like it was a very, I was cramping in the neck and legs, and I was like crawling into a ball like this. Uh, both your parents were they both teachers? Yeah, or yeah, both okay. teachers. Retired, both. Both or? retired. Uh-huh. Dad's a surfing hippie, and Mum's a a book reading hippie. So now they just cruise down the coast, basically, oh. or, or up the coast, up to the north of Australia, and Mum reads and Dad surfs. That's, That's so kind of just all they do. Yeah. That's good fun. And they're so happy. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you got plans for when you get back? Are you are you pumped? I mean, you don't f- have the feeling of feeling rejuvenated just yet, but have you got plans for when you get back? None, like, explicitly. I'm sort of excited about building up some form of excitement while mm. I'm away, I'm sure, because mm. I, I, when I get back, there's a few things, like the old NBA starts up again, so that always generates a bit of buzz, and I have a few clients that I'm working with at the moment that I've told I'm going to be away for the next two weeks, so I'm sure some ideas might come to me and I'll be excited about unpacking those and talking to those once I get back. Yeah. But there's no one thing I'm like, I can't wait to get back and do this. What about are you going to bring Easter eggs so that on Easter you have an Easter egg? I hadn't planned on it, no. I like to do That was no, a big issue when no I was check-in. on holidays. I like to do no check-in luggage, so carry-on only. Carry-on eggs. So seven kilograms, so I don't have room for eggs. Mate, he's healthy. He said he's gonna. He's I know, but do you remember, like when I was when I was growing up, and it was holidays, there was always like I I was still just as excited about the eggs. I remember being in. You know, uh, he's uh, talking about it last year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I remember. No, that one he Easter. He was in Europe. <laughs> no, yeah, no, one Easter. No, actually, in uh, I remember where I had chocolate when I was in Europe, not on this trip, but a few trips ago with Nissan. Uh, we Easter landed when we're in Malta, and uh, Malta is like a real Catholic or Christian mm. or whatever. So they do a lot, but they get into the fucking painted eggs, which oh, yeah. JJ isn't interested in. Because <laughs> you can't eat them. Yeah. They're real. <laughs> where's the they're chocolate? The healthy yeah, ones. The chocolate? But Four they grams did, of protein. But they did have a uh, at in Malta the Kit Kat peanut butter 
Nice. Bar, which is it's like it's, a, it's not Easter, mate. It's not something you eat on Easter. No, you can't. You're just now telling us a chocolate story. Do we like it? Has <laughs> nothing to do with Easter. <laughs> no, but it, do you do you remember? I actually remember this very quickly. Food on talk, the, your favourite. Oh, I know. On yeah. the Kit Kat, on the Kit Kat thing, do you remember when they started doing the thick Kit Kats, the like big the fingers, single, like the big chunky, chunky. Yeah, I Kit Kat chunky? Yeah. 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 That I was smoking a, a lot of weed then. It that was, was a, <laughs> really no, that was a, some of the best times. <laughs> that was a big deal. But, yeah, um, I know. Anyway, so no Easter eggs no, for you then? Probably not, no. I mean, it's Indonesia, which is full of Australians, so I'm sure they'll be somewhere selling selling chocolate. But you're not go, going to actively <laughs> say, okay, I'm go, on Sunday. Is it Sunday <laughs> oh they God. do whatever? <laughs> I haven't done, done that for you. Seriously, I've been thinking about my diet no, and I'm like, I want to – I can lean out a bit. I need to pull my finger out. You don't need to eat an Easter egg over Easter just because everyone else. Well, that's does. what I was thinking. I was like, you it's know what? One. Maybe, maybe I don't. But then I'm using that as an excuse where I'm like, I've already started eating Easter eggs. Already. <laughs> <laughs> in preparation, yeah. I'm like three I'm actually, weeks out. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to eat them on Easter. I'm just gonna just I can every get day it, around. Yeah, Easter. just gonna get it through, get it through the system, <laughs> and then move on. Um, Pete, you when you get back, you will have to pop into our new studio. I'd love to. I'm excited to see it. It will be a little. A little sneak tour before yeah, the video. Be, we'll have it and you'll Why um, is Mr. Nice we'll have an Martin. area? Our uh, full feature video, <laughs> feature film. Yeah. It was great. JJ <laughs> said, oh, Pete, check out, this, check out this great video of our new place. And I thought, well, they've done a video and like made an edit and like you guys do very good videos. I yeah. sat down and oh, it's just a handheld footage <laughs> of Josh iPhone walking through on his iPhone. Was it not impressive? <laughs> it's good to know because sometimes I... And it was like eight minutes. <laughs> that, was, that was three minutes actually. It feels like eight. <laughs> it, it felt like eight. Do you think I, did I miss the mark in regards to interest factor? I mean a little For bit. You? A, a photo would have been suffice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did mention to Pete, I'm like he should uh, get it, have a desk at the office and all that sort of thing. So I was, yeah. it was a soft sell. Yeah, so no, I, was, I appreciated the Soft sell. You're not that interested. We've lost I, him. I really liked it. I really liked it. I want to see when it's set up now. Okay. Like, yeah, okay. I'd like to yeah. see. No, yeah, it's he, a daily he's cautious. cautious. He's cautious. He's cautious. Uh, what's, what's your blog? How do it? How do people find your blog? You, the, I always click onto your Twitter profile. That's how I do oh, okay. it. But it's it's linked at humanperiscope.com. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, the URL, I think, is a- A-B-E-V, is yeah, it? Yeah, abev.blog, which what stands for a bird's eye view. A bird's eye view because of human periscope. Yeah. So abev.blog. All right, well, you guys haven't finished your chimichangas. I've uh, managed to do cold that. Cold so chimichangas. Yeah, so looking forward I'm, to it. Yeah, I'm actually looking, actually looking forward to There's it. There's actually nothing wrong with the cold chimichanga. Oh, I'm genuinely going to eat it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. It's the Daily Talk Show. Hi at thedailytalkshow.com. If you want to send us an email, otherwise we'll see you on Monday. See you guys. Bye, guys. See ya.